And we're we'll talking about mental fortitude, all right? Mental fortitude development, what you can do. It does not matter what your goal is, okay? You can come in here and you be training for, you know, be a janitor. I don't really care. You can be training for buds or whatever goal you have, and you're going to need to have mental fortitude. Honestly, in life, you're going to need to be able to tap into grit and have mental fortitude. So what I'm going to share tonight is just going to be really laid back. I've got a little presentation I'm going to throw on. It's going to basically keep me on track so I don't go on too many tangents. As you guys know who have been on these Zoom calls before, we've got a lot to talk about so we can go on a lot of rabbit trails. And I don't want to do that tonight because I want to st stick to our plan, right? Stick to the, the big mish, the big mission here. So let's jump right in. I'm going to I'm going to get going on our on our presentation here. And I uh, appreciate you guys jumping in on a Thursday night, jumping on Zoom. Some of you guys are new. Some of you guys have been around for a little while. And so I want to welcome everybody that's jumping in. All right. Before we start our presentation, just a little background on me. Actually, admin, before we do this, before I give an intro, hey, you guys, you can keep your screens on, off. I don't care, right? I know everybody's doing life right now. You're at the gym. You're at you know, you're at work, whatever's going on, you can keep your screen black or you can turn on your, your uh, camera. I don't care. All I would like to see in return, though, if you have your screen black, that if I ask a question, you guys can give me a thumbs up or have something to interact with me or else I don't know if anybody's hearing me. So either way, turn on your screen if possible. If not, I don't really care. Keep a black screen on. You guys can remit, remain anonymous. It is up to you. All right. So let's jump right in. Welcome. I got some some guys coming in, jumping on the call. So this is great. Let me go right to this presentation and then we will, I'll do a quick intro. So let me share my screen. And if, if anything comes up like, hey, I can't, you can't see anything, the screen's black or whatever, let me know and I'll fix, fix what's going on. All right. So here's the deal, guys. I should not be giving this presentation tonight. All right. That's, that's the truth. If you would have seen me back when I was 15, 16, 17, you would have said that kid has never any chance of becoming a Navy SEAL, of doing anything great in life, of anything more than literally just being a janitor. That's what I was when I was, my first job was, was cleaning, was a janitor. I also worked at a car rental. I uh, definitely was not cut out to be a Navy SEAL, if you would have seen me back then. And what happened was I made a shift in my mindset and I decided that I wanted to do something great. I wanted to do something to serve others. I wanted to do something out of my comfort zone, seeing my parents, seeing their past, seeing what they came from. I did not want to stay in that, not saying that they had a bad past or anything, but I wanted something more for myself. And a lot of you guys feel that you want something more for your life. You want to serve at a very high level. I don't, whether it's going to buds, whether it's serving in the military or not, you guys are all here because you want to achieve greatness. You want to do something that's out of your comfort zone. And you're probably listening to a lot of great inspirational people out there, right? We're all getting motivation. But for me, for me to say that I am like everybody else out there that has a incredible past of going through sports and maybe being great athletes, I was not that. So if you guys are in that boat where you're like, hey, I haven't really done much in life. I haven't, uh, you know, I maybe I failed. Maybe I was beat up when I was in, in high school, right? Or maybe you're just picked on. Whatever it is, you would maybe the underdog. That's my story. That's where I came from. I'm not somebody who was uh, somebody that was great. I had to build the mental fortitude. I had to build from the ground up my body. I was not ready when I was 15, 16, 17 to do anything great. All right. And but one thing that I really started doing when I knew that I wanted to be a Navy SEAL, when I knew that I wanted to go down this path was that I need to develop that mental fortitude. And one of the ways that I did that was by building my body, by strengthening my body, by doing things that were out of my comfort zone, by building grit. We talk about this all the time and everybody throws it around. Right. We're all talking about grit, how to never quit. Right. And they say go to Bud's or go to your pipeline, go through any challenge and just don't quit, right? No shit, right? No kidding. Don't quit if you want to make it. But it's a lot deeper than that. And as you guys know, anything challenging is going to be 
it's going to be difficult going through any challenge, right? There's going to be a lot of hard, hard things you're going to have to do. And there's going to be a lot of things that you're probably not prepared for. And if you have the mindset, I'm just going to go into it and not quit, you are probably setting yourself up for failure. Just talking about buds and that experience, everybody that shows up to buds has a never quit mindset, right? I was an instructor there for four years. And as part of an instructor duty, you're, you're on the quarter deck, right? You're watching guys come through, you're checking them in every single group that comes in. I would ask them, Hey, you guys going to make it. You have a never quit mindset. And every single guy would say, yes, I've never quit mindset. I will die before I quit. That's what everybody says. Right. And then, and then two weeks in to first phase, half the class is gone, right? Half the class is gone. And most of them have excuses of why they didn't make it. But everybody shows up. Everybody shows up fit, right? Everybody has a passing PST, a physical, physical standard test that everybody has to go through in order to even show up to buds. Everybody's past that. Everybody has a quote unquote, never quit mindset supposedly the best of the best that our country has to offer. And this is the, a volunteer pipeline. And then two weeks in, half of the class is gone. Out of 180 guys, they'll be cut in half after a few weeks, right? And then the numbers are pretty average, right? If you look at across the board through BUDS, through the, through the years, the numbers stay about the same as far as attrition rate. So it, there's something deeper than just I'm just going to go and not quit, right? Whatever I step into, what doesn't matter what pipeline you're going into. There's more than just not quitting. So we're going to dig into a little bit of mental fortitude development. Some of you guys who have heard this before, this will hopefully just reinforce what you've, what you've thought about yourself and what you've done. Maybe some things that are new. The picture you guys are seeing in the background that's kind of tilted there, that was Hell Week 263, winter class, 2007, January. That's the hell week I went through with. And we're about to do surf torture. If you guys don't know what that is, it's basically where you go in the ocean and uh, the water crashes over you and you're, you know, you're cold for a while, right? You come out and you take your shirt off and the wind whips around you and it's even colder. It's just one of the things that happens during, during buds. And that's when a lot of guys decide it's not for them. And they just thought before that it was just don't quit, right? Don't quit mentally be stronger, right? Mentally overcome. Well, if your heart's on it, you're going to decide it's not for you. So I'm going to, I'm going to share a little more about myself as we go through this, but I want you to just change the way you think about anything you move forward through mentally. So mental toughness has a lot more to do with your preparation, your confidence level than just a mindset that says you're not going to quit being stubborn, right? So let's go through this and see if I can get my computer to work. All right. So here's the myth. My mind can overcome anything. What I have done in my past has prepared me enough. And then I will die before I quit. Right. Those are, those are the thoughts that most people have. My mind can overcome anything. Well, your mind can overcome a lot, but if truly, if your heart is not in it, if you don't have anything that's really driving you forward, your mind cannot overcome a heart that doesn't want it, doesn't want the ultimate outcome. So yes, your mind can overcome anything if your heart is in it, if you have a strong why, if, you're, if you really are doing it for the right reasons, then your mind can then attach itself to that strong why, that purpose, all right? You know this, guys, you know this. Or what I had done in my past has prepared me. So in the past, I was a great athlete. I was a, you know, a state champion wrestler. I was a water polo player. Whatever you've done in your past, that's fantastic. Doesn't mean you're going to make it through the challenge that's facing you, whether that's buds or other challenges in front of you. You need to start thinking about what you need to do to prepare. Okay. And what are the things that you need to start doing now that you're not? Instead of getting complacent and saying, what I've done in my past has prepared me enough and say, what can I do now to prepare me for the future? It's that ne you're never peaking. You're never, you're never arriving. You're always training. You're always preparing. Okay. Then the third one, I will die before I quit. It's a great mindset, little thing to say, but most of the time your body will break before you get to this point. So we have to make sure that you're actually physically ready. If you have a physically challenging 
uh, pipeline or there's a goal you have, you want to become an athlete, you want to go into professional sports, you need to train your body. You need to train your mind, you train your body because this whole I will die before I quit mindset, it's great to have, but does it actually work? Most of the time, our body breaks before we get there. So don't just rely on these myths, okay? All right. So let's talk about goals, all right? Most people, when they are planning something in life, they have somewhat of a fuzzy goal, right? Meaning they're like, well, someday I want to do um, whatever. I want to become a Navy SEAL. I want to become a Green Beret. I want to become a police officer someday, right? I want you guys to push that aside and say, I'm getting very crystal clear on what my goal is. Because if you don't have a goal for yourself, if you have never placed something up on your wall saying, this is my number one goal, then you might not ever reach that. It's just going to become a pipe dream for you. You're going to be thinking about it in the back of your mind. And your mind is like, hey, I am, I'm thinking about this thing. So it must be coming true, right? No, that's just a lie. Oops. Let me restart this. Uh, PowerPoint died on me. So what I'm saying is when you guys have, let me open this back up. When you guys have something that you're going for, it's it's a lot more than just uh, just just having something in your head that's like, oh, you know, eventually one day it would be great if I achieve this goal, right? I want you guys to start thinking about a lot more clear, a lot more clear goals you have for yourself. All right, we need to get crystal. Can you guys all see my screen now? After PowerPoint died on me. Yes, coach. All right, perfect. So let's go deeper. You guys need to live, eat, and breathe this stuff. That's reality, okay? Live, eat, and breathe it. It's okay to be obsessed. Maybe when you were younger, your parents said, hey, don't be obsessed because that's there's something wrong with that. You guys need to put that out of your head. You guys should be obsessed about your goal, especially if it's hard. It should be worth dying for. If you thought, If you thought about long and hard that, like, this is something that I truly believe is for me, that you're willing to go at the extra mile, not mean you're going to die for it, but that you would be willing to go whatever it takes. That's what you're willing to do. Okay, think about short-term, long-term goals. If you're only thinking in the long-term, if you're only thinking in the long-term, you're going to get bogged down. So you need to create both. If you've never thought in week-long, month-long, three-month, six-month, 12-month, two-year, three-year, five-year, 10-year plans, like you haven't broken it up a little bit, then you should start thinking about that. Because sometimes you guys have a five-year goal. Well, when I'm five years from now, I want to be whatever. I want to be a Navy SEAL. I want to be a firefighter. I want to be a professional athlete. And you are you have that great goal. That's fantastic. But then the little steps along the way to get there are pretty fuzzy. So I want you guys to start setting a little bit more short-term goals with a long-term goal in mind. Okay, so guys that I work with in training, we're always setting short-term goals. We're thinking about, hey, what is the next score you want to get on the PST or what does your four-mile time run look like or whatever it is? Start thinking in shorter-term goals because they're attainable. And then once you attain the smaller goals, the long-term goals, they're going to become accomplished along the path. But if you just focus on the big goal, and you don't get in the weeds and think about short-term planning, then those never the big goals are never going to materialize for you, more than likely. All right, and this is a hard one for a lot of people. Is is your uh, is your ego attached to this? Um, and this is you know this is tough because sometimes you don't even know. Am I doing this because it's just for me? Do I want to walk around and tell everybody that what I've done? Do I want to? To tell my friends who's been doubting me, hey, look what I've get, look what I've done, look how badass I am. Or is it is it service in the highest level to other people? So start thinking about it in what does it truly mean for you to accomplish your goal? Because if it's selfish, if it's just for you, if it's ego centered, a lot of times it's, you do not actually accomplish that goal. One of the tricks that we talk about, it's not really a trick, but mindset tactic is when you're going through a challenge and it's really hard say like this Wednesday night of hell week 
You're doing, you've got the logs, you're doing lunges down to the demo pits and back. And you have people that, you know, decide that it's not for them and they want to quit. Well, what you're doing is uh, along the path is you think about helping them and helping them by not thinking about the pain you're going through, if that makes sense. So rather than saying, I'm just going to go inward, I'm just going to go inward with this. I'm just going to grind. I'm just going to go through this and just think about myself because it's all about me. When you start looking at other people and saying, how can I encourage them? How can I help them through this? How can I be a team player? The pain comes off you. You almost don't even feel it anymore. The cold water, whatever it might be, because you're looking to help other people. That's a true leader. So think about if it's if it's serving you, it's short term. It's really not going to last and it's not deep. When you start helping other people, man, that's when it that's when the beauty happens. And then before you know it, that evolution is done. You move on to the next thing. That's one of the things that helped me get through. Looking at other people, how can I help them? How can I encourage? How can I support? Takes your eyes and your emotions off yourself, puts it on other people. How can you serve and lead them and be there for them as a friend? And then before you know it, you're moved on to the next thing. Okay. And then make it visible. If you have never written your goals down and put them somewhere where you can see them, then your mind is not going to really gravitate towards it. There's a thing that, that people have said that if you think about, say like this, you want to buy a new truck, right? You want to buy a new Silverado, right? Chevy Silverado. And all of a sudden, when you're, when you're thinking about that truck, then you start seeing them everywhere. You drive down the freeway and there's a Silverado there. There's one there or Tacoma, right? And you just start seeing things that uh, around you and you didn't even notice them before necessarily, but all of a sudden, man, you start they pop up everywhere. It's on your radar. It's on your radar. So you want to make your goal visible. Put it on the back screen of your phone. Grab a little dry erase marker, write your goal on your mirror in your bathroom. Put it on your refrigerator. I don't care. Make it visible. Don't leave it a pie in the sky dream where you're like, hey, well, maybe one day I'll do this thing. No, get serious about it. Get really serious about it. Because if you don't, it's not going to happen. You're the only one that can move you closer to your goal. Nobody else. All right. So that's just the reality. One thing I didn't put on here was tell somebody else. That's one thing that the guys in our in our programming, you guys know this because you're on here, but you're telling your swim buddy what your goal is. You're talking about your timeline. We're making it real to somebody else. Because once you say that, once you say your goal, your timeline, whatever it is you have is your goal. Then you have somebody there to support you, but you also have made it out into the world, right? And then that goal starts to become even more lifelike and real for you, okay? So hopefully that helps a little bit with the goals. Now, that's just the first step. The next thing is talking about your priorities. Priority is what it should be, all right? So here's what it should be. It should be one priority, not priorities in life. If you have priorities, then you're going to be overwhelmed. Most people have school, work, family, and friends, and then they have their, their goal, right? They have the thing they really want to do. Most people have about those, those four, top four right there. And their priority turns into, normally it's work, right? Well, I got to go to work because my boss is waiting on me. I need to make money. So priority number one turns into work. And then also school, normally. Well, up there is also family and friends and relationships. Obviously, those are really important things. I'm going to have something crazy for you guys to think about, though. If you leave those at priority number one, they're never going to be your top goal. They're, you're never going to you're never going to do what you really want to do. If you leave those three at the top and your true goal for you that you want to accomplish at priority number three, four, or five, or six at the bottom. You're not going to be able to have discipline if your priority number four is your goal. Maybe you want to go to BUDS and be successful and become a Navy SEAL. You want to go through the SF pipeline. You want to become an Army Ranger. You want to become a police officer. If you prioritize everything else and that one is at the bottom, then you know in your head that you are not doing what you need to be doing. You're not living in integrity for yourself. So what you have to do, and the beauty of this is that when you place that goal at the top of the priority list, 
everything else falls into proper perspective. I'm also saying this, things are going to be a little bit crazy. They're going to be, things aren't going to be, work-life balance is not going to be there for you. You're probably going to have to say to your friends, hey, I can't hang out this weekend because I need to do, I need to do work and school and train. There's some other things I need to do, right? There's, there's a time and a place for everything, but your goal, your ultimate goal, the thing that you want to accomplish needs to be at the top or else it's never going to happen. You're not going to be able to wake up early to go train if your goal is at the bottom, or even if it's number two. If your number one goal is to get a college degree, well, you're going to darn show up to college and do your classes and get your get your work in there, right? You're going to do that. But then the priority number two is become a Navy SEAL. That's kind of on the back burner, or it's become a firefighter or whatever it is your goal is. That thing is going to stay there and your mind is not going to be able to do the proper work that is necessary right now to get you to that ultimate goal. You're going to stay in the job you're in now forever, or maybe not forever, but you're not going to reach your ultimate goal. So you have to place your ultimate goal, the thing that you want most in life at the top. Okay. That's just the reality. You're going to have to put it there because anything challenging or hard in life is going to require that you place that at the top because that is going to be the most challenging thing to do. And it's a no brainer, right? You say like you say like you got uh, accepted to be on a professional sports team. Well, your family and your friends would be like, oh my gosh, this is awesome. They're going to, they're going to be like, well, yeah, you got to show up to practice. Yeah. You need to go in and get yourself out of your comfort zone. Yeah. You need to sacrifice time with your family because you're a professional athlete, right? It's, it's a no brainer, but same thing goes for you guys. You want something else in life. Well, maybe you do want to be a professional athlete. I don't know, but say like you want to be a Navy SEAL. You're going to have to put that at the top because that's literally the hardest thing you're ever going to do in life, at least from a physical and mental standpoint. So quit treating it like a priority number three because everything else is not falling into place. All right. So put it as number one. That will allow your body and your mind to have integrity with each other. And you will be able to get up early to go run. You'll be able to stay up late if you need to, to train. You'll be able to set up your calendar so that you can actually get your training in because you have that as your ultimate goal. But don't set it down there on bottom, you know, bottom rank there on number four or even two. Put it up where it belongs so you can actually achieve that thing. Now, I understand school is important if that's what you're doing. Work is obviously important. So get those things done. But if you leave those as priority number one and two, then your, your goal of becoming a Navy SEAL, whatever goal you have, that is challenging, will probably never happen. What I did is I put that one at number one. And I still worked. I had worked two jobs. I was going to school and I had a, a family. I had siblings and parents and grandparents. I made time for everybody in the right in the right time. I went to school and I worked, but my priority number one was training to prepare myself because I knew that was going to be the ultimate test. So put that up number one. All right. So we're going to talk about grit. Now Moving past, you have your goal, you make that clear, then you put it in proper perspective in the priority ranking. Next is grit. And grit is going to be something that you're going to have to use, doesn't matter what goal you have. And grit is that thing that's going to, it's basically your stick to itiveness, how willing you are to go through pain to reach a goal. And it plays out really freaking clearly when you guys are going through a hard training pipeline, such as going to buds. You're going to see this. You're going to see guys that when they get cold, when they're cold, wet, and sandy, they're going to decide it's not for them. Uh, and they they're just don't tap into grit. It's like, they, here's another thing, guys, and I'll talk about this later, but you need to do things in the elements. You need to have a body that is used to being uncomfortable. If you're always training in the gym that's air conditioned and, and with the heater on, you're really not developing much grit. So think about what you're going to be doing and develop that. When I was 18 years old, I did not have grit. That was something I had to develop. I had a mindset that knew what it wanted, had a really strong why, but I, I needed to develop this grit. So I put myself in really uncomfortable situations. I did 12-hour hikes with 60 pounds. I did 24-hour hikes, see how far I could go. 
I did some bunch of crazy stuff to get myself out of my comfort zone. Now, we're going to talk about that in a second, a little bit further, but let's talk about being developed or innate. So some people feel like grit is something you just have, right? You kind of born with, but really your grit that you have is going to be, it's the foundation really comes from your values and beliefs. You're not going to be able to go through the fire, through any challenge in life. If you don't believe that it's anything worth fighting for, you're just not right. If you don't value hard work, then you're not even be able to tap into grit. So the foundation truly is your values and belief system. I'm not talking about religion. I'm talking about who you are as a human being, what it is you, you believe to be true. You have to start digging into that stuff because that's the freaking foundation and you cannot tap into grit if you are wishy-washy on what your values are. If you don't value hard work, if you don't value sacrifice, you'll never be able to tap into grit. So that's what I'm getting at with values and beliefs. Now, grit is also... Eyes straight forward, moving through adversity. That's what I talk about with blinders. It's like the horses, right? When they have blinders on, they don't see to the right and left. They see straight in front of them. That's all the direction they go. That's th the same thing for you guys. We're so distracted now. There's all kinds of distractions, all kinds of just bombardment of just information and some of it good, some of it bad, some of it just random. And it's distracting people. So what you need to do, and especially for grit, you're going to have to really focus. Pretend like you have blinders on. You just stare straight forward through adversity, through that challenge. And you're going to keep moving forward no matter what happens. So as you got blinders on, so you're not looking to the right or to the left. You're not looking at the bell. To this day, the bell still like scares me, right? Any bell. I was talking to our other coach, Ian. It's the same thing. He's like, he's like, I won't ring a bell. It doesn't matter where I am. It's like a bell. I run away from it, right? That's innate and, and developed from the, the fear of the bell at Buds where you're just like, fuck that thing. I'm not going anywhere near that. So that's what I'm talking about, the grit. You have grit knowing that you will go through anything to achieve your goal. So it's blinders. You have these blinders on. That will allow you to just say, see straight ahead. You go through no matter what happens. You're just moving forward. You're moving forward. And then in this, guys, embrace that it's going to be hard. If you know that it's going to be hard and you embrace that, you just like, well, here it comes and here we go. Instead of being surprised when it gets hard, surprised when you're cold, surprised when things are challenging, just embrace that it's going to be hard and you just move forward through it. All right. And then we talked about this earlier, but it's that others first mentality where you're thinking about others, you're at servant leadership, and ultimately it's not all about you. Okay. So if you're, if you're thinking about tapping into grit and you want to keep moving forward through challenges, you think about the outcome. If I were to just give up now, we lose the mission. You have to think about it in more of terms of in, in kind of a bigger picture, looking at things. If the Navy SEAL team went into a fight, they're fighting to the death. They're fighting to the last man standing. That's your mindset through this. The mission will be won. So the grit is just part of who you are, right? That's what you're going to do. You're going you're gonna to have grit. You're going to have to tap into grit. It all goes back to your values and beliefs. If you don't believe in hard work, if you don't believe that the best things in life are worth working for and that they're going to be hard, then it's going to be a wake-up call for you. All right? The, the people that can embrace the challenge and they can move forward through grit are going to go a whole lot farther than other people who just turn their back on it, say it's too cold, it's too miserable, it's too early in the morning, I'm hungry, whatever it might be. The world is full of people like that. That's not you guys. That's not you. All right. So then the next one I want to dig into is what you guys can do now to start building that grit. And, you know, we're talking about it being part of like kind of a, a, a thing in like mental, mental headspace, right? When we're talking about foundation, your, your values and all that, but let's talk about some stuff you can actually do. All right. And we're hitting some of the things we talked about before. I'm talking about the others first, mission focus, all that. But here's the big one I want everybody to walk away from is take messy action. Okay? Do not wait to have all the information. Do not wait to have the perfect schedule, okay, where you have everything lined up just perfect. Don't wait to have everything figured out. Decisive action takers win. And if you're just waiting for the perfect time, man, when I finish my college degree, 
and I have X amount of money in the bank and I have this and this and this and this and this, and then I'll start, I'll, then I'll really go for my goal. By that time, it's going to be too late. And your brain and your heart, they're not in integrity with each other because they're distracted. They're on two different wavelengths. Your priority and your goals aren't in alignment. So what you do is you get focused on your goal, right? You get that priority level straight and you take action, man. You take action. Even if you don't know everything, don't overanalyze. That happens to a lot of people. They just are like, well, okay, now I have so much information. I don't know what to do. They just freeze. It's better to just focus on the thing that you need to do that day than to think about the, the big picture and try to figure it all out at the same time. Guy, okay, just going back to a Bud's example, guys show up to Bud's and the and um, you know happens in Hell Week. The first thing that happens right after breakout in Hell Week is surf torture, where you're hanging out in the ocean for a little while, and guys think like, "Wow, for the next six days, I'm going to be this cold," and they overanalyze that moment of surf torture at the very beginning of Hell Week. And a bunch of dudes quit, right? But then right after, right after the breakout, right after the surf torture, your boat's on head running down a demo pits. And things are changing and things are moving. And then before you know it, everybody's warmed back up again, right? And that evolution is over. And then the guys that quit are like, wow, they're already doing that. And they're moving on, they're moving on. And wow, they're done with Hell Week. And now they're moving on with first phase and they're done with that. And they're moving on like... Guys that overanalyze, they think about, wow, for the next few weeks, it's going to be this. And they get caught up and they think about the, the big picture of like the stuff that's in front of them. And they just freeze and that's when they decide it's not for them. So don't overanalyze. Don't overthink things, okay? Really. It'll, it'll, it'll derail you. So don't, the, or the amount of information on training. You're like, I'm listening to this podcast. I'm reading this book. I'm following this coach. I'm watching all of these videos on YouTube. Everybody's a fitness coach nowadays, right? They work out and they show their videos and they're a fitness coach. So now you're just looking at all these different people doing different things and they probably have zero. Uh, they don't have the same background that you're trying to go towards, right? They don't have, they don't have the experience or maybe they do. And they're on a completely different path right now. So don't take all the information and try to cram it into your life. It's probably not, you're probably not doing the same thing that they are. Maybe they're not training for the same thing you are. So you want to seek guidance, right? You want to seek guidance towards your ultimate goal that you want to accomplish, not what everybody else in the world is trying to do. What is your number one goal? It's going back to your goal setting. Take messy action, seek the guidance you need. We talked about this earlier. I'm going to hammer it again, both these last points. It's going to be hard, so embrace that. Embrace that cold mornings are going to be freaking just cold. Cold water immersion is cold. Uh, you know, boats and logs are not fun. Just embrace that. And before you know it, you'll be in and through it. All right. And then lastly, like we talked about, it's not about you. Mission focused. If it's all about you, you're going to decide that it's not for you. More than likely. Okay. All right. Now going to... Let's see if I can get back to my slide. Taking action. Okay, so this is the stuff you guys probably want to talk about, not just the, the high level, but here's some stuff you guys can work on to help your, okay, you have the, you have the goals, you have the priority in place, right? You have the plan in place. Well, then how do you actually build mental fortitude through action? Well, here's some things. If you've never done breathing work before, that's one thing that I did not do when I was training. I wish I had. When I was in the teams, this is something I wish I would have practiced. I didn't know about box breathing until I was a buds instructor. I didn't know about any of the breathing stuff until I was basically almost out of the teams. This is stuff you guys are learning now that's massive, massive stuff that you can use at your disposal now. So don't neglect the breathing work because it's huge. It's a game changer. And we work on a lot of different kinds. Those of you guys that are in the training know what I'm talking about. This is one of those things, though, that you use the breathing work and you have it at your disposal down the road. You don't use it. You don't practice it. Then you're like, well, breathing is breathing, right? And you just don't actually be able to use the techniques correctly. So practice them. This, okay, number two is experience the elements 
like I talked about, most of the stuff you do as an operator, and especially during your pipeline, is going to be a newsflash outdoors. So if everything you guys do is indoors, running on the treadmill, now I understand it's winter time coming up, right? So it's cold in a lot of places, but I'm talking even in the winter time, train outdoors if you can, okay? Ruck outside. Use the treadmill if you have to indoors, but really the majority of your training should be in and around the outdoors. Because when you're going through and you're trying to tap into grit, and it's the first time you've swam in the open water uh, in the actual ocean, and that's the first time, and that happens to be at Bud's, then you're literally in over your head. And a lot of people just don't like that. Spend time training outdoors, ruck in the elements, hike, go put yourself out there in situations where it's uncomfortable, where you're backpacking, like just be outdoors. Train outdoors with a swim buddy or with a lifeguard. You swim in the open water. You learn how to swim with fins in the open water. You train like you're going to fight. Don't just train in the gym where there's all kinds of distractions, where everybody's obsessed with their, their cell phones and the gyms are overpacked. And there's just there, everybody's not training for what you're training and they're distracting you. Try to train outdoors if you can. Build your own gym at your house. Do things that are uncomfortable, but build grit by being out in the elements, okay? Do this, obviously, smartly. I'm not saying be stupid out there. I'm just saying that this is something you can do that a lot of other people aren't doing because they want to just be comfortable in the, the, the air-conditioned buildings, in the heated buildings, right? Get yourself out there where it's uncomfortable and push your body. Now, another thing is, number three is structured training programs. Make sure you guys go through an actual plan of action instead of just, hey, I'm going to go to the gym and work out. Okay, there's a lot of people that go to the gym to work out, but they don't have the same goal as you. They just want to lose some weight or look jacked, right? But that's probably not you guys. Maybe maybe you guys do, and that's great. But I'm saying when you go to the gym, you should train. You're training for something. You're training for something or else how do you know if you ever arrive unless your goal is just to lose weight? And that's great. If that's what it is, then that's fantastic. But I really think you guys need a training program so that you can actually see measured results, okay? Number four is surround yourself with high performers. If you're the strongest, the fastest person in your circle of friends, then find people that are outside of that and be around them. Man, that's a big one. If you train or you're by yourself and you're around people that are either they don't have your same goals that are not, you're the strongest guy at the gym. Well, surround yourself with the next level. Find the next fastest person and train with them. And if they find out you're training for something high level, if they find out you're training to be an army ranger and they're faster than you, well, that should be a wake-up call. They're better at rucking than you. Well, that should be a wake-up call so that you can work harder and figure out ways to get stronger. Don't let your ego get in the way. I started from as the underdog. So my ego, you know, was already down there. So that's why I'm saying it wasn't as that hard for me. It was like, there was only one way, but up. I put myself on the cross country running team and was one of the slowest people there initially. I didn't let myself stay there. I got fast and that's what you want. You want to put yourself in situations where you're, you're probably not the best person there. Moving on to number, number five here is find that challenge. Some of you guys on this group are doing the, are doing challenges such as a triathlon, a marathon, a go ruck challenge, Kokoro, whatever it might be to get yourself out of your comfort zone, a challenge, do it. You guys need to do that stuff. It's a, it's a great little tester for you. I'm not saying that's the only thing that should, you should be using to prepare yourself for something challenging, but those are great little tests. Those are good little things you can do to measure yourself and compare yourself and to push yourself amongst other high achievers. Do it again. Don't just do one thing. Do another challenging thing. What I did when I was younger, when I was training to go to Bud's, I did a lot of triathlons. And those compared to actual Bud's prep are pretty freaking easy. You know, you're only running and swimming and biking. Those are easy things compared to everything you have to prep for going into a pipeline. And lastly is find your weaknesses and crush them. Okay. If you think about what you're going to face, you got to consider that as your game day. And we talk about this all the time in our in our mentoring program is you got to consider that as game day. So you would not show up to game day as an athlete 
and not be prepared or at least not have put work in, right? If you did, if you did that, you showed up to your, your game, say you played soccer or football, show up to game, you didn't put the work in beforehand, your family and friends would say, hey, bro, it's going to be rough for you because you didn't put the work in. And then all of a sudden, when you want to join the military and you want to go through a pipeline, you show up unprepared. Nobody's, you know, says anything of it because it's, they're going to train you, right? When you show up to your pipeline, they're going to train you to become whatever job, right? It's like, no, that is the job interview. Selection is the job interview. If you think about BUDS, it is a six month job interview. You don't really train to be a SEAL until SQT, which comes after the job interview. So train for that, train for that. Because if you don't, you're going to show up and, and be like somebody who wants to be a software engineer. It's an example I like to share a lot because so like you want to go work for Google or Amazon or you know computer nerd companies, and you want to be a software engineer, and you show up to the interview and you say, hey, I want to do this. I've been wanting to be a software engineer for my whole life. I want this more than anything. I want to have the money, the prestige. I want to be a, you know, work with the great computer engineers, make some great stuff. And then the interviewer guy, he's going to say, hey, okay, Roger that. What have you done to prepare yourself? What, inter what um, internships have you done? What degrees do you have? What's your background? What have you done to prepare yourself to be this software engineer? And you say, well, I don't know. You know, I, I tinkered with some computers growing up. I played a lot of Call of Duty and I just really want it bad. I really want it. I want to do it more than anything else. And the guys there can be like, Roger that. Well, you know, I would love to give you this opportunity to do the job, but you're not qualified because you didn't put the work in. But what I do have for you is an opportunity to work for Amazon working as a, a truck loader, right? You can work in the, in the warehouse and maybe work your way up to software engineer down the road. And you got your foot in the door and you say, Roger, that I'll take the job. And that's how a lot of people face the pipelines they go towards in the military. They say, man, I just, you show up. I really want this bad, man. I want this more than anything. I'm going to die before I let this opportunity pass me away. And the gatekeepers of the job, the instructor staff are going to say, Roger that. Let's see what work you've put in. So they put you through the job interview and lo and behold, you don't make it because you did not put the work in and you find yourself swab in the deck because there was no preparation or you missed something in your preparation or whatever it might be. I'm not saying this is for everybody. This happens just a lot. I'm just, I'm just telling you guys what my experience has been is what I've seen. So now if you reverse engineer a little bit, you have this golden opportunity in front of you between now and when you show up to whatever goal you have, whatever job interview you have, this is the golden opportunity to start training now. Because if you don't and you just say, hey, I'm going to just be like everybody else, I'm going to show up with a never quit mindset. I'm going to show up with a passing physical standard score. And I'm just not going to quit. I'm just going to go through it, man, just like everybody else. Well, you'll probably find yourself not making it. Because it, there are standards through most pipelines, through most jobs, whether you go, even if it's not military related, there's a lot of standards. There's wickets you have to hit. So why have a really challenging goal and it just expected to just happen for you. That's not the reality. That's not how life works. So right now you can feel inside of you that you need confidence. I would imagine, right? You want confidence knowing that when you move forward, whatever goal you have, you have confidence that you did everything you possibly could. So that's what you want. You don't want to just have this like fuzzy, like, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready to go. You want to be confident knowing that you put the work in. At least that's what you, that's what I'd hope for. You guys would all have that. So, like I mentioned before, the most important time of your life is now, all right? Once you show up to testing, once you show up to game day, once you show up to your interview, you can't just say, hey, let me rewind and just go back in time so if I, I can just get back after it again, prepare myself, whatever it might be. No, they're going to say, Roger that, you know, you, you're a great person. It's nothing against you, but you're not prepared. You, you, you didn't put the work in. And what I'd like to see from all of you guys is to go through the priority list, the goal setting. And once you get crystal clear on that you start going hundred percent towards the goal, whatever you have, and then know that this is the most important time of your life because you can't take these days back. You know, I pretty much know, and I think you guys do that. This is the only life we live. So you might as well go all in towards the number one goal you have, right? So this is important time. Don't get bogged down in other people's goals. If that's not yours, it's not yours. Truly decide what's right for you. 
not right for me, not right for anybody else, but right for you. Pick whatever it is you decide that you have called, you feel called to even, right? If it's a calling or whatever you want to call it and go all in on that because that's what the world needs more of is people that have gone all in headlong, obsessed about their goals. There's a lot of wishy-washy people out there. They're trying to do too many things. They're trying to diversify everything. No, pick one thing and go head for that. Become as successful at that thing, right? Do that because there's very few people that can do that and can handle that amount of, of discipline. Any Dude, if you guys lock your sights on that goal, doesn't matter how hard it is, I know you can achieve it. If I can do it, you guys can do it, truly. When I was 20, turning 21, I went through, I went through buds and uh, went through SQT and, and served my 10 years, 11 years in the SEAL teams. And what I can say is whatever challenge you're going through, whatever goal you have and whatever you know, path that you're on right now is that it's worth it. So when you come up against the roadblocks and you come up against the early mornings and the frustration and the, you know, someone's pain and sacrifice, know that it's worth it. Cause I would do it all over again. I would go back through it all over again. If I could, if I had to. Okay. And you guys, I want you to feel that tonight, pick, decide, lock it in, make that goal into that like imprint on who you are and then go headlong towards that. Okay. So I don't have time to go through any Q and a tonight, but I did want to say, if you guys want to connect further with me, here's some information. You guys can go and email me. Uh, if you guys want to talk further about locking in your goals and goal setting training, all of that stuff, here's a few ways you can connect with me further. And like I said, I want you guys to start getting crystal for yourself, not for me, not for anybody else. Get crystal clear on your goal. I've got a goal setting worksheet that if you guys do send me an email and you want to you want to talk further with me, I'll send over the goal setting worksheet and I want you guys to go through it and then we can we can mastermind your path forward together, okay?